Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. We welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning, we are fortunate to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami giving the class. Maharaj will be speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 6, Verse 14. And the chapter's topic is Srila Narada Muni's conversation with Srila Vyasadeva. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Is it 14 or 14 and 15? Oh, you know, Mother, I mean, I mean, sorry, you know, Maharaj, I, you might, you might be right. I, um, let me quickly check. I completely don't remember, unfortunately, but Maharaj, you can do both. Oh, wait, it's right here, I think. Uh, let me check i think you might be it is yes maharaj it is 14 and 15 you are right maharaj okay thank you <laughs> thank you that's what i was told mm. thank you maharaj okay mm. om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavata Parishwatendri Atmaham Tatpadito Bubuksitaha Snatva Pitva Rade Nadia Upasprito Gata Sramaha. Thus traveling, I felt tired both bodily and mentally. And I was both thirsty and hungry, so I took a bath in the river lake and also drank water. By contacting water, I got relief from my exhaustion. <clears throat> a traveling mendicant can meet the needs of the body, namely thirst and hunger by the gifts of nature without being a beggar at the doors of the householder. The mendicant therefore does not go to the householders to beg, but to enlighten them spiritually. Okay, next verse. Tasmin nirman yujayranye papalopasta asritaha anatmananam atmastam vitasrutam machintayam. Translation, after that, under the shadow of a banyan tree, in an uninhabited forest, I began to meditate upon the soul situated within from liberated souls. Purport. One should not meditate according to one's personal whims. One should know perfectly well from the authoritative sources of scriptures through the transparent medium of a bona fide spiritual master in the, by the proper use of one's trained intelligence for meditating upon the super soul dwelling within every living being. This consciousness is thoroughly developed by a devotee who has rendered loving service unto the Lord by carrying out the orders of the spiritual master. Sri Narayaji contacted bona fide spiritual masters, served them sincerely and got enlightened and rightly. Thus he began to meditate. Saraswati Deve, Gauda Vani Pacharini Nirvishesha Sunya Vari Pasyatya De Sutane Anchakalpatu Vishakri Pasindave, the Chapatitaram, Bhagavan Vyo, Vaishnavi Vyo, Mahon Maha Jaisi Krishna, Chaitanya, Pavunitananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakti Rinda Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. 
Sanara Muni, after departing from the hotel where his mother was a maidservant for four months during the rainy season, when the uh, sadhus, yogis, tapasis came to rest during that period of time and do near Jan Bhajan, personal meditations. He served them very nicely. And he also heard from them and he learned many things. His mother died by being bitten by a snake. He left and as a young boy went wandering, but he kept within his heart the instructions that he received and meditated on them. And here we see after traveling from some time and becoming refreshed, he goes to an uninhabited forest and begins to meditate according to what he had learned from others. <laughs> now, <clears throat> he learned from persons who know. <laughs> Nowadays, people who form there are various types of meditations from people who are not qualified to give instructions on meditations or any type of yoga. It is uh, extremely fashionable, not just fashionable, but extremely fashionable to do yoga in various types of concocted ways based on one's idea taking the word yoga, which means actually spiritual connection to the Supreme Lord. And they uh, use that word simply as a gymnastic expression in order to increase material desires, perfect material gains, or even uh, come up with ideas which are, are completely ludicrous and call it meditation or yoga. We see nowadays, if you do a little research, you may find that there's a whole list of different types of yogas that go on. And they uh, have different, what we say, advertisements to attract people in a certain way, increase the quality of your sex life, increase the, the quality of your health, lose weight. <laughs> um, these are some of them. And they even became really uh, completely ridiculous where there is a kind of yoga called beer yoga. Beer yoga is people they uh, do hatha yoga with a bottle of beer next to them. And they drink the beer and then they do the yoga, or whatever they call yoga anyway. Sometimes they balance the bottle of beer on their head and try to do some uh, calisthenics to try to, I don't know what they try to do. Anyway, it's qu quite ridiculous. This is showing you how, how far off things have gotten in today's society, uh, the whole idea is just do something new and call it something new. But it's just uh, the twist of the material energy to satisfy the senses in different ways and rearranging how the material energy appears. That's all. And they may give it any kind of name. So <clears throat> somebody sent me a, a thing just recently about some kind of prophecy and I was reading it. It was supposed to be a prophecy of the present time. I couldn't understand anything because all he was using all kinds of fancy words to describe something that I couldn't figure out what he was talking about. <laughs> he kept going from different aspects of his topic, which was about the, you know, the purification of the earth. And so <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have all these uh, so-called bogies, yogis, rogies, 
and coming out with all kinds of ideas and people are susceptible because they don't know and they also have material desires and so when this sounds like it might fulfill their material desires they go into it sometimes they become part of it and uh, so what we have today is that nobody knows what real meditation is and what real yoga is yoga real yoga is to link up with the supreme Yoginam api sarve sam api tendranat manaha shadavam bhajate yo mante te me yukatamo mataha. Real yoga really means to connect with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. As Krishna explains himself in the very detailed explanation in the sixth chapter of, of Bhagavad Gita, ending with this verse we just quoted. So this is, uh, one has to take um, instructions for meditation or for yoga from a bona fide person who can teach it. So there's where the, where the point is, who's bona fide and who's not. And then again, that has to be tested by a person's con connection with the Supreme. Are they actually connected with the Supreme in yoga? And they, are they qualified to teach that also? So that can be judged by their activities and by their words, a combination of both, not just by their words. Because people can speak anything. Well, Bhad gave us the a little bit of a, a twist on the word teacher, T-E-A-C-H-E-R, one who is meant to give instructions to others. But then again, if you take those same letters and you rearrange them, you get another word, C-H-E-A-T-E-R, cheater. Mm -hmm. Same letters rearranged. So this is what we have today. Now, people want to be in a position to have followers and, uh, <laughs> and uh, prestige. And of course, getting material remunerations in the form of money and other things. So people will invent anything in the name of spirituality. And if they have some intelligence, some material intelligence, they can present it in a convincing way. But one has to search out an authority that is bona fide, and that is the bona fide spiritual master, or the actual representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Who can represent the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Only those who know what is the nature of the Supreme, what is his words, how to apply his words in a practical sense, and how to live them himself, and at the same time teach to others. So there's many uh, fundamental characteristics and qualities that are required for a person to take the position of a spiritual teacher. It's not something that is just open for grabs, anybody who has a little intelligence. And you see that today, there's so many it's like there was this uh, very respectable uh, gentleman who met Srila Prabhupada in India. And uh, he had come to Prabhupada to learn. And he was convinced that Prabhupada was the person he wanted to learn from and maybe even surrender his life to. So he mentioned, or he questioned Srila Prabhupada on one point. He said, Swamiji, we have so many uh, sadhus, saints, holy men in India, here in India, yet we have so many problems. And then Prabhupada said, this is the problem. We, you don't know who is actually a saintly person. You accept anyone who can come forward and speak very nicely. It may appear according to the image that a spiritual master is given to have to present himself in that way. And therefore Prabhupada exposed that, yeah, there are so many in the name of uh, spiritual teachers, but who is an actual bona fide representative of the Supreme Lord 
is that one has to actually be empowered by the Lord. Krishna Shakti Vinana He Tad Bhuvartanam. Only one who is empowered by the Lord can be can represent the Lord in the process of teaching the conditioned souls, the process of connecting with the Lord in devotion. And not anybody. Well, that's a process. And one has to be trained in the process. One has to develop the process. And one has to be empowered by the Lord. There are many who can practice the process and also be trained. But if they're not empowered by the Lord, then they don't have that adhikari or that qualification to lead others. So here we learn exactly that um, Narada Muni is teaching us that he, what he learned from liberated souls. He didn't say what he learned from, you know, some people I met. He learned from liberated souls. So those persons who are not part of the interaction of the three modes of material nature, who's, who is situated on the para, uh, um, a parapakriti, not the aparapakriti, the parapakriti or the uh, daibi shakti, the spiritual energy, mamchayo, vibhacharena, bhakti yogena sevati, saguna samatitya itam brahma buyaya kalpate. One who is engaged in full devotional service, who does not fall down under any circumstance and transcend the modes of material nature and come to the Brahman platform or the spiritual platform or the platform by which uh, one's soul exists on. The soul exists on the Brahman platform. We are all Brahman, but we are encased within the Aparapakriti or the material energy and therefore we are pushed by that energy according to our activities in our words. So therefore, it, it requires training in devotional service. And then ultimately, it ha one has to be uh, what we say self effulgent. They have, by their activities, by their words, and by their example, they, key, they have to uh, show that they can. Uh, enlighten other words and just like sometimes people would criticize our movement and saying you know um, well you know you're making uh, disciples from people who are born in Malachia birth countries don't they never had any Sukritis then no training and now they become Vaishnavas. Prabhupada said, well, we, have, we can see by example, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and engaging in devotional service. So this, this is being seen and it's being demonstrated in a regular way. And therefore one can say, oh yes, this person who is training them is bona fide because he's making people free from the material energy. Okay. And sometimes people will also criticize us. And Prabhupada would say, well, we are chanting Hare Krishna. And uh, because we are chanting Hare Krishna, we are developing all these, you know, good qualities or getting free from the qualities of the modes of passion and ignorance. So this shows that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as taught and guided by the spiritual master is powerful enough to uplift a person away from the material energy and bring them to the spiritual platform. So one of the examples are, are numerous, but one has to learn from a person who is actually an authority and not someone who claims to be authority. <laughs> you know, someone can, someone who wants to be a medical practitioner, he might go to 
uh, the libraries and read books on medicine or even study medicine by reading different kinds of books. After he's finished reading books, he comes and he opens up his office. He puts out his, his shingle outside. You know, I am so-and-so MD. <laughs> well, what is his training? He just read a bunch of books. That's all. But we understand that in order to become a doctor, you have to go through at least eight years of training, medical school, residency, and on-the-job training, so many requirements in order to receive your authorization to practice. So in the same way, uh, those who are representing this, the spiritual master must go through the training process and show by example that they are empowered by the Lord. And that empowerment is self-fulfulgent. It doesn't come by advertising oneself that, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guru. <laughs> We have so many of these so-called gurus today. But what is their qualifications? They have many followers. Is that they have a they have a certain mystic power? It's called. It's um, I can't remember the actual terminology, but they can speak in such a way as to convince people that what they're saying is what they want you to believe. <laughs> You know, they can speak in such a way that they use certain terminologies. And it's mostly word jugglery or taking the Vedic literatures and just picking and choosing various parts and putting it together and deriding a particular idea or philosophy from that. And because they know how to speak in a very convincing way, they have some uh, power because of them, some austerities. Because when you perform austerities, you get power. Even those who perform material austerities get material power. So their power is material through austerities and having some knowledge of spiritual principles. Uh, they, you know, speak and people come and then they have large followings. And this is what we have today. So many so-called gurus <laughs> but then again you see their followers what are they actually learning and how are they actually developing some of them develop some good qualities in the mode of goodness but they have no real connection with the supreme lord in devotion which requires training in that area it's a process it's not simply a desire that can be applied or a process that can be applied in any way you want. It's, it's, it's in Mahajano Yaina Kata Sapanta. One must follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans or the great souls. This is the secret of religious principles. Tarko Pratishte Sutana Vibhinnam. And the last line is Mahajano Yaina Kata Sapanta. Panta means past. One must follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans, the great souls. Otherwise, whatever they do is from a evahikevalam. It's a, a, a useless waste of time. It may look nice from the external point of view, but it may elevate the person a little bit outside of the mode of ignorance. But usually they're still functioning in the mode of passion because they have material desires and they're trying to fulfill material desires through spiritual, so-called spiritual activities. Also. <clears throat> so the world is full of that today. Uh, and Prabhupada came to destroy that. <laughs> That's why his mantra was, uh, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacha to rid the world of nirvishesha and sunyavadi mayavadiism impersonalism voidism and establish you know uh, real spiritual principles based on the idea that the supreme personality of godhead as described by himself in his own words in 
Barrier scripture is a personality who has qualities, characteristics, and has an intimate and eternal relationship with all living entities. So it's very rare you meet a bona fide spiritual master. So we were, we can say we are very fortunate, not for, very fortunate, extremely fortunate to have come in contact with Srila Prabhupada and his movement. Even those who are not directly initiated by Prabhupada are still Prabhupada disciples because they are connected with Srila Prabhupada through the process that Prabhupada gave us is ISKCON society. So anyone who comes into this, Srila Prabhupada remains their, their spiritual master in the sense that he guides them through his representatives who are following him exactly. And therefore one is getting not only the mercy of one spiritual master, but also a direct connection with the founder of Acharya Srila Prabhupada through his instructions, which come in the form of his books, his lectures, his teachings in various circles that he participated in. So we have a, a unlimited amount of knowledge. You can't even exhaust what Prabhupada gave us in one lifetime. There's so much. And uh, so we were, be, were very fortunate. So anyone who comes into contact with this ISKCON society can develop a direct relationship to Srila Prabhupada by serving Prabhupada's words through his representatives. So this is, uh, <clears throat> therefore, Srila Prabhupada is not only a liberated soul, he is a uh, very rare soul. He's an eternal associate of the Lord coming from the spiritual world to do this work at this particular time because of the advent of Kali Yuga and all of the uh, sinful and sinful activities that are permeated in the name of material success. And Srila Prabhupada came at, the, at a specific time, according to Krishna's arrangement, to spread Lord Chaitanya's movement which will, which is meant to push back the effects of Kali Yuga and bring in, bring in the enlightened age for 10,000 years of Lord Chaitanya's movement of chanting and dancing uh, and understanding one's uh, eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and devotion. So this was a uh, rare, uh, rare good fortune for those who took shelter of Srila Prabhupada either directly as his disciples or directly as the disciples of his disciples. Both are direct. <laughs> okay, so uh, therefore, if you want to learn what is real meditation, what is real devotion, you have to have that person who is qualified. And then again, uh, the characteristics and qualifications uh, which are exhibited by the spiritual master have to be analyzed in relationship to what is being said in the Shastras. The Shastras define what is a spiritual master. Um, just like it says, we, uh, we sing that prayer every day in the morning. Um, let's see. Chaku dan dilo ye jan me jan me Prabhu say Divigyan Rinde Prakasi Prima Bhakti all out all the scriptures. In other words, you can learn what is a spiritual master or pure spiritual master by understanding the words of the scriptures and then using those words as a understanding of how to evaluate a spiritual master. If he has these qualities and he's acting accordingly, then he is empowered by the Lord. 
Okay, so we'll stop there and we'll open it up for any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a wonderful deep class. If there are any questions or comments from devotees, um, please um, unmute yourself. You can definitely unmute yourself and just jump right in and ask a question, or you can put it in the chat, but either way is fine. Um, we will be checking for the questions. Are there any questions or comments from devotees? I'm trying to look down the list here so I don't miss anyone. March, I have a question from the class and uh, you spoke about qualifications and I would like to know if you could speak about what are the important qualifications or what are the qualifications for one to lead others? Well, they have to, to be a bona fide spiritual master. One of the main one, he has to come in disciplic succession coming from Krishna himself. <clears throat> in other words, he has to be part of that bona fide parampara system. And that's one of the foundational qualities. He can't simply be someone who just comes and then establishes himself. There's a connection between Krishna and that spiritual master. Therefore, we have the four bona fide Vaishnav Sampradayas. And anyone who takes shelter, any one of those four, are, are, are able to practice uh, devotional service. That's one of them. Uh, the second quality is that the spiritual master only business is to uh, spread the glories of the Lord and to attract others to devotional service and give them a chance to engage in devotional service. So in other words, his main business is only because he doesn't have a, a job on the side so he can, you know, he can uh, do something else. I mean, like he's a part-time spiritual master. No, spiritual master means full-time. <laughs> That's his certain. Um, there are others, other qualifications and characteristics. I don't have my list in front of me, but there is a, a long, there is a, a longer list. Um, oh yeah, Tasmad Guru Prapadyante Divas Jigyasa Shrayutama Sabde Pare Chira Nishnatman Brahma Upasura Swayam. He must know the scriptures, he must be able to explain the scriptures, and he must be able to defeat all opposing arguments in contrary to. The, the enlightened scriptures. And that's a very important. He can't just have a, like some superficial knowledge. He must know the knowledge. He must be able to apply it and he must be able to teach it to others in a practical way. And he, be, he must know the difference between what is actual devotional service and what calls on is devotional service like that. Mm -hmm. What appears to be, he must know the distinction between real bhakti and pretentious bhakti. Mm -hmm. So knowledge of Shastra and application of that knowledge in life, along with instructing that knowledge to others is another requirement. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. So, Devi Mataji, you have a question? Please go ahead and ask. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I, uh, thank you so much for speaking. Uh, Shila, I have a good fortune of coming into Srila Prabhupada movement. And, uh, you know, the greatness of Srila Prabhupada. I personally, I have never met Srila Prabhupada physically, but I feel very connected to his books and writing and listening to his lectures. But often uh, devotees ask who has not met. So I never met Srila Prabhupada. So how would I develop a relationship and how would I know what I should be doing to please him? Would you please comment on that? Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> there are many who, who are in the same category as you. 
and they all can testify that they have a relationship with Prabhupada because Srila Prabhupada is not relegated to his personal. There's two things called Vani and Vapu. Vani means personal association and Vapu means his words. So those who take the words of the spiritual master and learn how to apply them in a practical day-to-day -day, uh, life style, in other words, learning that the process of application, um, the connection is there. The connection is there. Prabhupada is Jagat Guru. He is the spiritual master for the entire universe. And so he's not relegated to simply one's personal association. If one reads his books, associates with his devotees, but most important practices in a in a day-to-day -day real way, what he has taught, then one is connected. He reasons ill, let's say that Vaishnavas die when thou art living still and sound. Vaishnavas die to live and in living, spread the holy name around. So a spiritual, a pure devotee spiritual master does not die, he remains within the hearts of his devotees and he remains and he becomes a very intricate part of those who follow his teachings, both sadhana and seva. So anyone at any time can come into this Krishna conscious movement and learn about Srila Prabhupada, learn what he taught and practice what he taught. To learn what he's taught is not taught is nice, but you have to practice it. When you practice it, that is the connection to Srila Prabhupada. If, thank you, Maharaj. That was helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very nice question, so David. Thank you for asking. Really, really nice. Sri Devi, you can ask a question, Prabhu. Thank you, Anasuya. Please accept my humble obeisances. Dear Guru Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj, all glories to the assembled Vaishnavas, my humble obeisances to all. I have a question regarding an ad I put in the e-newspaper here. I said, I offered to teach you mantra yoga. I will be, um, I am a person who has been practicing this mantra yoga for 20 years and following the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. If you're interested, please get in touch. Hare Krishna. To my surprise, a few people replied, said they're interested. And one person in particular is showing a lot of interest. She wants to learn mantra yoga. Now, I'm in a bit of a fix because I want to be representing us nicely, but I don't feel qualified or very knowledgeable, except that I know to chant a little bit. And uh, I know the basics of our Krishna conscious philosophy. So I, I, I'm just a little puzzled about how best to guide her without misrepresenting myself as some guru or something, but just a humble practitioner of this process. Well, just teach what Prabhupada taught, that's all. Teach her how to chant. And when she has questions or concerns, you answer them, that's all. Based on, there's no, whatever question she'll ask has already been asked before. You can, all you, all you have to do is refer to the authorities for the right answers. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. You're you teaching mantra yoga, so teach it. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Sri Devi. Are there other questions? Okay. Go ahead, Prichay, Prichay has a question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, when you were answering one of the questions, you brought up the four Sampradayas. Brahma Gaudiya Sampradaya, Sri Sampradaya, you know, it, it goes on with the Kumaras and so on. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, Rudra Sampradaya, Lord Shiva. Um, my question is, since we are connected this is the power of past connected with the Brahma Gaudiya Sampradaya. Um, and literally, the power of past giving the opportunity for us to, if we take the process seriously, get the mercy to go to Goloka Vrindavan in particular, not just the spiritual world, Goloka Vrindavan. 
do the other sampradayas give that kind of opportunity to go to Goloka Vrindavan, especially since Lakshmi or Sri Shampada, Lakshmi is with Narayan, that's the Vaikuntha planets. So that's why I'm a little bit you know, puzzled there. Can somebody in the Sri Sampadaya, for example, with Lakshmi, go to Goloka Vrindavan? <laughs> well, it's the spiritual world. And it's <laughs> well, yeah, across the board it is. But, but, but uh, we know that um, Goloka Vrindavan especially has more rasas than, yeah. Than, yeah. So that's why, again, I'm just kind of puzzled. If they, if they, adopt, if they adopt the uh, process, as given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they can still follow their sampradaya. And for instance, when we were in uh, we were in uh, South India, we we met the leaders of the Sri Sampradaya. This was in Ayatra back in 2005, 2006. Um, and uh, they were glorifying the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Of course, they also chant Om Namo Narayanaya as taught by their, and they worship, but they also have an understanding of uh, Lord Chaitanya because Lord Chaitanya came and stayed in the house of uh, Venkata Bhatta, whose uh, son was Gopal Bhatta, and later on he became Gopal Bhatta Goswami, one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. So that family still connect, is still there, that, they, that family connection from Vekatabhat, that line is still there. And we met the person who was alive today, his name was Murli Bhatt. He was an active person within the, uh, the temple, what was the name of that temple? Uh, that slips my mind, that particular temple there with the seven walls around it. Sri Rangam. Yeah, Sri yeah, Sri Rangam. Sri Rangam Temple. So they so they were acknowledging the glories of Lord Chaitanya and the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So anyone who takes up that, that that is Vrindavan. Goloka Premadan Harinam Sankirtan, Ratin Jamilo Kene Upai. So that chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the, the means to connect with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who will lead one back to Vrindavan. So that, that can be adopted by any of them if they want to. But generally, they stick to their process according to their acharyas like that. But we, we, we spoke to the leading acharya of the Sri Sampradaya. He was the, the I don't know, the what number in line from uh, Ramanujacharya? He was right in the line of the Acharyas from Ramanujacharya. And he was glorifying the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's on tape. We actually have it recorded. Uh, so if they adopt that, that's fine. But generally, they look towards Vaikuntha. They worship Lakshmi Narayan, like that, most of them. Now, the four Kumaras are more or less, um, they're more in the mood of Vrindavan. The four Kumaras are more in the mood of Vrindavan because their um, their worshipful Lord is Nimbarka. And both, mostly they teach more about Vrindavan. But in this age, unless people go through Mahaprabhu, it's very difficult to reach Vrindavan Dham. It's practically impossible. Only by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, he's opened up that door. And Lord Chaitanya is not relegated simply to our movement. Anybody who wants to adopt his process can do that. And they can also follow in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya's teachings and qualify themselves to to purify themselves to the mood of Vrindavan. And that's Lord Chaitanya's teachings. He's teaching Vrindavan through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Thank but you, Maharaj. Yeah, but generally they, they follow their particular line. Thank you very much. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the link <laughs> everywhere if you want to go back to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
regardless you know, of the yeah the even if you the, want to take the, it yeah even the Madhva Sampradaya acknowledged Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's contribution to spreading, spreading God consciousness around the world. Their leaders, top leaders, Pejo or Mat Swami, one of the biggest leaders of the Madhva, he also acknowledged Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement through Srila Prabhupada's preaching around the world. So now we see how fortunate we are. Thank you very much, much. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for explaining. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Mahaprabhu is the mercy manifestation of Vrindavan. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Um, I would have a, a question about, um, sometimes I hear that uh, devotees uh, happen to, to state that something manifests uh, from the heart. Like, yeah, sometimes it's like skills and, uh, and stuff, but uh, sometimes I, I heard that um, someone uh, stated that some philosophical point manifested from the heart and how should we uh, understand this thing because I mean it can be speculation or I, I know that it happens uh, but usually it's a very high level devotees if it's in line with if it's in line with the scriptures if it's not in line with the scriptures then it's questionable <clears throat> it has to be in line with the scriptures it may be expressed in different words, but if, if the essential principle is the same and it's in line with the scriptures, it can be accepted. <laughs> so, so it can ha happen even to to those uh, devotees who are not uh, on a, a totally pure level. Um, uh, Krishna can can give anyone whatever he wants to give them. <laughs> we don't really know. We may uh, always, the thing is, it has to be checked and tested with Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. If it, it, if it is, it can come from any source. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, yes. this is this is not a question, it's just we want to thank you um very much. And I just want to say that I appreciate the way you take Sri Prabhupada's instructions or Sri Prabhupada's comment and in your own way come up with a very, very nice way of presenting it, making it a lot simpler, <laughs> for, you know. And I heard like the way you took teacher and cheater, and that's what you're the part. But the, this way you said it's the letters are all the same, you turn them around and you get this other word. You know, so it's it's just hearing it said that way in your own style of presentation. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you very much for doing it like that. Hare Krishna. That's all I wanted to say. Hare Krishna. My obeisance is to you. Thank you. You also are uh, ad uh, adept in presenting Krishna consciousness. Really, I just I just depend on you and your father by the dinner words. <laughs> Whatever they say, I say I don't know much. I, but anyway, I understand what you're saying, Hare Krishna. That's that's a great quality to simply refer to the great souls in whatever we do. That's that's our success. Hare Krishna. Yeah, and you Hare Krishna. Marge, I have a question and um, 
I was reflecting on yesterday's verse that we covered in class and um, Shubh, and I was reach, uh, reading a, a quote uh, by Shri Prabhupada that he mentioned in one of his conversational lectures, you know, that he has with devotees or his walking morning walk stuff. And he mentioned about the importance of um, personality and character in in um, in in leading others how can one work maraj on really uh developing the needed personality and character to lead others by practicing those qualities those qualities are part of the soul's innate existence and it, by through practice you bring them out <laughs> You bring them out. They're there. It's not something you have to develop. They have something you have to uncover because the soul has all good qualities. But we practice. You practice humility. Practice tolerance. Practice uh, um, nonviolence. Practice those qualities that you want to develop learn learn the technique for practicing them too how to practice them sometimes we say that you can't really develop humility unless you're put in the position of having to be humble in other words uh, you can't simply read about humility and then say well i'm humble now because i can explain the words of you really know and when you put in a situation where you have to be humble and then you act in the right way and then that that, that 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 quality becomes part of you or becomes part of your character if you want to be tolerant you have to find you have to be tested for that tolerance if you want to be prideless you have to be tested it's not simply reading and learning about the philosophical explanations of the qualities. You have to know that and you have to be put in that and you have to practice that. Then these qualities will develop <laughs> gradually or they'll manifest themselves. <laughs> Marsh, when you were speaking about developing the qualities and tolerance, as you know, and you talked about humility and tolerance, and you said that we have to be tested. And sometimes, you know, human nature, we get so tired of this test, Marsh. Like, <laughs> and the tolerance is like, okay, Krishna, how much more? And then the mind says, I am done, I'm tired. But at the same time, we know that we have to be tolerant, but at the same time, we know, but I'm tired. So how to balance the mind, you know, like, how do we do? <laughs> well, if you become tired, it means you haven't passed it yet. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it means, it means it's still coming until you actually get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So after some time, one will see that that is the way, that is just the way things are. And it won't be so much a test of tolerance. It will be something that, you can accept and you can move move forward on without being disturbed. And Prabhupada said that. He actually made, he actually said that in relationship to tolerance. He said um, the greatness of a person can be estimated by how much they're able to tolerate in disturbing situations. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, can you repeat that again, please? I would like to make a note of it. <laughs> yeah, the greatness of a person can uh -huh. be can, will be estimated by how much they are able to tolerate in disturbing situations. So a greatness of a person is their ability to tolerate. And there's two kinds of tolerance, and you have to know what are those two kinds of tolerance generally tolerances that come just by having a material body and living in the material world 
and then the tolerances that come by way of Krishna sending uh, purifications to you in order for you to advance in Krishna consciousness. And those, both of these are expressed in two different verses. One is in the Bhagavad Gita. Marta sparses to kontaya sit no sa suka duka da. Agapaino nityas tamste tikshiva bharata. The non parent appearance of happiness and distress are like the appearance and disappearance of the winter and summer se seasons. They rise from sense perception, or sense perception, or ski and a bar. And one should learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. These are the ordinary forms of, of uh, difficulties that come by way of living in this world. You know, so many things you have to tolerate and just, you know, you have to tolerate heat, you have to tolerate cold. You have to tolerate the fact that things just don't go your way. <laughs> you have to tolerate other people. Uh, these are all kinds of... Now there's another one. Tate nukampa shusha mikshamanam bhujane vakritam vipakam vidra bhukupir varada namaste jiveti yo mukti padesha dayavak. This is another kind of tolerance which is a little bit more elevated where Krishna sends you difficulties in order to purify you, you accept those difficulties as the mercy of the Lord. Not only do you accept them, but you thank the Lord. And in that way, you actually make advancement to the level of liberation, actually. Marge, if I can just quickly phrase so I heard you correctly, I don't want to miss the point. You said the two kinds of tolerance is Krishna sending purification and the other one is by being in this material world with the material body? Yeah, generally, okay. just living in this world, you can't live unless you're tolerant. It's not possible. <laughs> That's true. You can't say, well, why is it always, why am I cold because this world has coldness in it why am i why is it always hot because it has hotness why do people act the way they do because they are under the influence of the material modes of you know so these are things you have to tolerate you want you, you sit down to a nice meal and then you eat too much and you you feel bad at the end of the meal so and you have to tolerate <laughs> The fact that you made a mistake <laughs> and ate too much. So there's so many levels of tolerance. And Marge, also, you, I just wanted to make sure that I got it clear is that if when, when we get tired of the test or we give up or all that, it's a sign that we haven't passed the tolerance. It's, he, can it be, Mamarj, in this, you know, this popular verse in Bhagavad Gita, happiness and distress, we have to be equipoised. So would that fall into that, Marge? Because, um, you know, if we tie it, we don't give, we give up, is because we haven't passed the test of tolerance. Passing the test means you have, you, you, these situations that come upon you, that causes you to be tolerant, there's something you can learn from them. Mm -hmm. If you don't take the learning experience from these situations, then then you get tired. <laughs> mm. So you can gain from these situations, and that's what they're meant for, to help to teach us. Mm. Thank you, Maharaj. But Maharaj, that's a, you, I'm sorry. You know, yeah. you have, as long as you have a material body, you can expect difficulties. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Mm. And Marge, the older, I'm the older, sorry, Marge. The older you get, <laughs> the more they come. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, I still remember you telling us some uh, uh, many, I think about 20 something years ago in Gita Nagri, you, in one of your class or something, you said, don't get old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good, we're happy to repeat that instruction. <laughs> Because this, the soul is Nava Yovanam. It's always youthful. So stay on the spiritual platform and you'll never get old. 
thank you. I remember Maraj, that was advice you gave me directly, Flex. You don't get old. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> yeah, that's not you, that's your body. Marsh, we have a question in the chat and it's by Rohini. She said, Hare Krishna, how do you know when to tolerate an unacceptable situation and when to use your effort to change it? Doesn't God help those who help themselves? Isn't just tolerating something too passive? Yeah, you have to know, and that's called having, you have to know the discrimination between the situation and whether to respond in one way or not respond. That requires intelligence. It may also require some experience. Sometimes it requires advice from other people. So not every situation that presents tolerance is the same. Somebody speaking nonsense in a public forum and if you go along with it and tolerate it, and then that's that means you haven't understood what tolerance means. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll give you an example of what, what tolerance is not. There was one famous uh, proponent of nonviolence. And um, it wasn't Gandhi, it was someone else. And uh, he was always saying that I will never act violent in any situation. And he was, he became somewhat famous from his a complete detachment for any kind of violent response to anything. So one reporter came to him and said, my dear sir, um, you know, you have, you have two daughters, I noticed. And so if someone comes to violate your daughter, what will you, what, what will you do? Will you do anything to stop them? And he responded in an, in an indirect way. He said, under any circumstances, I will not become violent. And then the reporter pushed the question again. And he responded in the same way. And then the reporter said, my dear sir, you are violent. <laughs> one who does not protect the innocent uh, allows one to exploit the innocent to contributing to that type of, of violence. So tolerance requires discrimination on how to act in every situation. Someone is speaking nonsense and you think, oh, well, I have to be tolerant. <laughs> so, and then they, you let them believe their nonsense is correct, and you also become affected by that. But if you don't speak up and give the correct understanding, that's tolerance by responding in the right way. So sometimes we have to speak, and sometimes we remain simply quiet. It requires intelligence. Thank you, Maraj. I hope that helped Rohini. Um, you can ask more if you need more clarification. She just said, thank you so much. Thank you, Rohini. Maraj, there's a, one more question from Sri Devi in, in regards to tolerance. What about domestic violence situations? <laughs> what about them? <laughs> How much to tolerate, I'm assuming. Sri Devi, do you want to add more to your question? I think uh, Guru Maharaj answered it by saying that if one is violent towards, you know, the innocent, that is violence. And it should not be tolerated. Well, the, the domestic violence is considered a crime. <laughs> So that, uh, go ahead, Sri Devi. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, concerned because not every situation the woman is, you know, beaten black and blue. There's lots of situations where there's emotional abuse and verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also spiritual abuse. They use the philosophy to make you toe the line and keep you in bondage. So there's all kinds of domestic violence situations, especially with very intelligent people 
they will not beat you up or you know um, there won't be any scars on the outside but the damage that is done to a woman emotionally and mentally and you know on the subtle level is uh, equally devastating for a woman um Yeah, but then again, you have to see the situation, whether it's respond or not respond. You have to see the situation and see whether and what is the situation. So we, no one can, no, no Vaishnav scripture cond condones mistreating anyone. Mistreating of another living entity is considered an offense. So as a principle, as a philosophy, as a way of life, a devotee is kind to all living entities and doesn't cause any distress to anyone. But you'll see sometimes within uh, family life, there are disagreements and sometimes those disagreements become very strong like that. But then again, in order to settle the disagreements, if violence is not, is not the means, one has to go to higher knowledge and apply those things. But if you're talking about non-devotees, just like in this, this lockdown situation we have worldwide, it's not being reported, but uh, we have information available that domestic violence has increased tremendously. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tremendously, especially in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, because people are acting in the modes of passion and ignorance, and therefore they are not living according to spiritual qualities, spiritual characteristics, spiritual instructions. So you can expect that in the material world. So it's not when in a material world, when these things happen and there is some complaint, there is a, there is a uh, it's a crime also. Uh, and it's one of the biggest crimes because um, I had a personal experience with some police officers. One day I was traveling. It was early morning. I was in Chicago. We were traveling with a group of devotees. This was a Sunday morning, early Sunday morning. We were on our way to a Hindu temple to do a program. So our vehicle got a flat tire. And so we needed some help. At one point, the police arrived. So they came to help us. So I started to speak with the, the police in a very, you know, friendly way. And I said, it must be kind of quiet at this time of the day. There's not so much going on. He said, oh, no. He said, this is the worst time, the weekends. He said, he said, the weekends are the worst. He said, this is when all the domestic violence happens. And he said, we always find ourselves in a very difficult situation because when we go and try to settle it, if we take one side or the other, the other person gets mad at us. <laughs> so he said, it's, he was explaining how difficult it, it was for a police officer to go in the midst of domestic violence because people are so close to each other that when you try to intervene, even in to help, you may also be seen as someone who is not helping but causing more problems. <laughs> so, yeah. So this, uh, but if it happens in devotee circles, then it's an offense and shouldn't be tolerated. If devotees are being abused, they should complain to their spiritual masters or to the spiritual masters of their spirit of their spouse, if it's the same one, and rectify the situation. Because abusing another devotee is an offense. There's disagreement, but then again, one has to know how to disagree without causing, without acting in a violent way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thank you, Parisha. Yeah, this is, they really hate dealing with domestic violence because they can't really, uh, and they don't really understand how to deal, deal with it. <laughs> and they find themselves being the ones that are causing the problems when they come in to try to help sometimes. <laughs> Marge, I think there, I'm sorry, I think there is a comment I'm trying to, see. oh yes, from um, Manisha, and she quoted a verse from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 1, verse 36, where it says that according to the Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors, a poison giver, one who sets the fire to the house, one who attacks with deadly weapons, one who plunders riches, one who occupies another's land, and one who kidnaps a wife. Such aggressors are at once to be killed and no sin is incurred by killing such aggressors. Yeah, but you still have to deal with the laws of the state mm -hmm. so they don't follow that. <laughs> so if you try to kill somebody, by saying I follow this particular scriptures, you'll definitely be punished by the state anyway, because they don't follow the Vedic culture or the Vedic tradition. They consider it and you committed a crime. <laughs> so we can't apply that in today's world. I hope that helped, uh, Sri Devi. If you and if you want to add more questions, you can. That was Manisha who gave. Yes, that. Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. And I think uh, Brikshit put a question: kidnapping a wife is it domestic? I think you're saying is is it domestic violence? I think that's the question. No, actually, no. I, I just meant it as a joke. We, we, oh, we, oh, no, oh, sorry. No, no, because it's one of those six that you wrote, and I said that so I picked that one up and said. Maybe that's domestic violence. So just just for fun. Everybody. Oh, okay. But yeah, oh. Maya, you can comment on it if you want. I can I can give you a perfect example that happened. Okay. In, in where I was, and uh, you know, somebody had taken the wife of another person. Both of them were devotees, and uh, this devotee, he followed that scriptural thing and he killed the other devotee <laughs> and then uh, he was warned not to do so because he was told that if you do you're going to get punished by the law but he went ahead anyway and then he wound up in jail <laughs> so yeah it happens <laughs> Thank you, Marge. We have a question from Sudha. Please ask your question, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Um, Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, Dharat Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful, wonderful class. I mean, it's very deep and there's so many striking points and like really, um, really learning so much from all your classes. Um, uh, Maharaj, I have a question about like uh, saying like tolerance and non-violence. So like a scenario, Maharaj, where like a situation like, you know, it comes like, you know, where people are trying to put you down. Uh, making you realize that you are very incapable, ignoring you always. Um, and um, I mean, so many things. Um, so how to deal um, like uh, situations like this? I mean, if it's going constantly, we, I mean, if it's like once or like, you know, we can definitely tolerate, but if they are trying to apply, practice this and, uh, you know, and trying to repeatedly like do these things um, and uh, it's affecting your confidence level, so how can I apply the principle of like tolerance here, like in these situations? Mm, yes. Well, you have to see the situation. Sometimes you, you know, like Sri Thakur, when he was, he was trying to be, they tried to make him look like he was a worshiper of Durga Devi by placing various types of articles on his doorstep and then calling others and showing that he is actually a worshiper of Durga Dave. 
What he did was he called everyone and said, now you know what I am. Of course, it wasn't true. But that person who was an offender uh, came down with a disease and later on he suffered tremendously. Uh, a person who is offending another person will definitely get a reaction for that. And they'll also have to. But uh, generally, if it's something that keeps coming, you shouldn't, it's not like you should allow people to abuse you in the name of tolerance because it's not good for you and it's not good for them. It's not good for anyone in that situation. So if you can get out of the situation, that's the best thing. If you can't, then there has to be some effort to try to correct that. So, um, so Maharaj, fight uh, them, like uh, what uh, we should? Uh, Say that avoid them like should we like just um, try to yeah if you uh, avoid them that's that's the best if you can so if, uh, yeah, uh -huh. that's it. you all nobody wants to be around people that the one who wants to criticize you and harass you if it's like uh, uh through family Maharaj, like how can we deal with those things like, yeah that's the hard part when it's family members um, yeah, generally with family members, you, someone, you should definitely try to correct the situation to allow them to continue to abuse you in the name of trying to correct you or chastising you. If, you, if there's something that you see that they're saying is, is correct and you can use it to change for the better, then why not? But if, you, if it's just their problem and they're just taking their problem out on you, that's a whole different thing. Then, that you, should, then you should do something to respond, which will change their way of acting. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with uh, families many times, you know, they take advantage of each other. And because a person has a superior position within the family, they abuse others. But that can't be the, that can't be the protocol for living in that environment. <laughs> it's not that you every time you're around that person then you're always apprehensive uh, mm -hmm. uneasy or maybe even fearful so uh, that doesn't make a relationship but relationships are based on helping each other mm -hmm. grow in whatever activities we're performing together there's ways that the family can grow together there's ways the family can operate together all these things are principles that we should follow. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes when some when there is some wrongdoing, the, the, the leaders of the family have to make some corrections. But when it comes to adults, Prabhupada even said that to his disciples. He said, I can't chastise you because you are grown up. You know, you, you chastise children who are growing so they learn and that was Chanaka Pandit's theory between the age of six years old and 15 when you're raising a child in that category you, you, you should be very strict with them um, but when they get older when they get 15 years older older 16 then you treat them like a friend and if there's some disagreement and then that can be communicated in an intelligent way. Otherwise, they break or they go away or they don't respond like that. Or if they tolerate, they simply become miserable. Okay. So you have to see the situation and respond accordingly. Is it a small thing or is it a big thing?
Okay, Maharaj. Oh, yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. I will, yeah, I will try. To, uh, usually what I try to do is I just try to avoid um, their company, but sometimes like, uh, you know, um, uh, it's very hard if it comes through relations. Um, uh, we can't avoid, uh, we have to meet them often. Yeah, but this um, uh, knowledge, uh, this uh, Prabhupada books and instructions from all these uh, self-realized souls, it's really helping me to deal with these things. Those who abuse others are, are, are sick in the mind. It's a kind of a sickness. Mm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. I just want to share this, Maharaj. I was uh, reading this uh, um, 8 to 12 Bhagavad Gita and... Uh, I mean, um, I, I could relate uh, a lot of things uh, like, you know, your lectures. I mean, it helped me to understand better this was uh, to listening to your lectures. From the 13th chapter of Gita, verses uh, 8 to 12. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are the 20 qualities of knowledge. Yeah, yeah Maharaj. So, well, Prabhupada's explanations help us to get a clear <laughs> understanding. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so Maharaj, uh, so we have to focus on these qualities and uh, we have, and this is like a real knowledge. And so once we develop this knowledge, uh, that's when the love of God had begins, Maharaj. The, the, the qualities of the modes of goodness are conducive to our devotional service. We can't worship the Lord in the qualities of the modes of passion and ignorance. Mm -hmm. So tolerance, patience, pridelessness, uh, peacefulness, austerity, uh, simplicity, uh, equipoise in, in happiness and distress, mm -hmm. uh, knowing the scriptures, knowing how to apply the knowledge of the scriptures, these are all qualities of the mode of goodness. Qualities of the mode of passion and ignorance. The qualities of the mode of passion is that one may be very creative in how to do things in order to get some material results. That's the best of the quality of the mode of passion. Creativity in order to produce material gain. A generally mode of passion is uh, just uh, lament lamenting <clears throat> lamenting my bad fortune, uh, dreaming about good fortune. So all these are all modes of that. We have to come to the mode of goodness. Krishna told Arjuna, and he was a fighter, you have to come to the mode of goodness. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah. So dreaming about good fortune is also a mode of passion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Material good fortune, yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your association. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Sure. Maharaj, there's a question here um, sent to me privately from Diraj, and he said, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Hiranyakashipu used demonic powers and mantras to kill Prahlad Maharaj. Do those demonic powers and energy exist in these times? He said, I wanted to ask this question yesterday, but I didn't. And then I had a dream of Lord Nasingadev shadow in my dream. And uh, I was motionlessly sleeping and loudly singing Nashinga Arati and was continued singing when my dream broke. Is this a good sign, Guru Maharaj? <laughs> Well, Prabhupada said dreams about the Lord are actually non-different than the Lord's appearance in person. So, <clears throat> But uh, in the first part of the question, there are very few, if any, demons who have a lot of mystic powers, but they, there are some who do. Who do. 
There are some, but they usually exist on other planets. They also influence what goes on on this planet. But because of Kali Yuga, the qualities of all the all qualities have taken a a uh, decline. So the quality, the good qualities are less good in this age, and the bad qualities are less bad in this age. <laughs> So there are demons who have mystic power and they can do things. Generally, they're cheaters, they're businessmen, they're people who plot to get more money, more power, more control, like that. That's also, also a demoniac quality. And the demons are prominent in, right now in this age. But they're, they're tiny demons. They just, they make some legislation they, they, they use the media to lie to you about everything. And they get you to buy all kinds of stuff. And then they threaten you with various types of punishments if you don't go along. And so this, the demons are, they're always trying to exploit people, control people. And there are demons in this world who have amassed a huge amounts of wealth, not just billions of dollars, but hundreds of billions of dollars worth of wealth you can't you can't uh, you can't buy gold anymore you can hardly buy silver all precious metals have been taken up by the demons and hoarded the, the diamonds the diamond the, the diamond mines have been controlled by the demons so the demons they're into power they're into wealth they're into sense gratification and mostly they're into control. What gives the demons the most happiness is when they can control others. And that's a quality of Krishna. Krishna is the controller. Krishna is the creator and Krishna is the destroyer. So the demons, they want to become uh, the maintainer of everybody and the destroyer if you, if you don't follow their maintenance. They can't be the creator, but they're trying for the other two features of the Lord. So that's a demon. And it's described in the Bhagavatam. You can you read about the characteristics of Kamsa, the characteristics of Rani Kashipu, the characteristics of Ravana. And you can see these characteristics exist today. And so there are demons but they're not as powerful as they were years ago. But still, they cause disturbances. But the bodies don't have to worry. All they have to do is take shelter of the Krishna, and Krishna will protect them from demoniac influences. If we don't take shelter of Krishna, then we're subject to the disturbances that, and the control that they try to apply. So if Lord Nishringadeva appears to you, that you can consider yourself very fortunate. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, yes. I hope that helped, Diraj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there other questions um, from devotees? Okay, there's one that just popped up. Sometimes I feel there is Duryodhana also within us and Arjun also within us and we keep having a war within. That's by Namrata. Uh, maybe, uh, I think, um, let's see. Let Anasuya answer this because Anasuya knows the answer because her Guru Maharaj has been addressed by this question and he has, the, he has that answer. I remember his answer for this question. Maharaj, I, if I can beg you to answer, because I think I'm going to make a fool of myself. Please, Maharaj, I okay. beg you. I'm sure you remember Bhakti Tirta Swami's answer to this question. The question was phrased slightly different, but the same principle, the same idea is there in the question. I'm trying to remember the answer, but I do remember the question, how he, you know, he, he, he did say it similar like that differently, but I honestly much, I don't remember the answer. Uh, maybe I'm sure Pariksha Prabhu knows it. 
He's trying to actually, my eyes. I started typing in the chat section. I was going to type two dogs, which one barked the loudest, and the good dog or the bad dog. That's yeah, that's the something. that's what Ma, that's what Maharaj said. And he said, <laughs> and he says, which which one will be the strongest one? And what what was his answer? It depends. If you're going to be, uh, oops, am I still on? Yeah, it depends. If if you take shelter and you do the right things, yeah, then the good things come out more. And if you get in Maya, well, then here you are, causing trouble. Yeah. The one you feed the most. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, exactly. The one you feed the most is going to be. If you feed the, the good part, the, if you feed the good part, the good part comes out. If you feed the bad part, the bad part comes out. So if we feed Durya, then. <laughs> <laughs> then we become Durya. Then, if we feed Arjun, then we we, we, we become the servant. Right, and, yes, if, and, and if you don't feed Durya down, then he'll die eventually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, my husband. And and Marge, if if I may also add that, and I I think what helps to feed the good dog and not the bad dog is um, devotee association. Perfect, perfect answer. Okay, perfect answer. Yeah, and this is where you get your nourishment from. Perfect because I answer. think that sometimes, um, you know, as devotees, or some sometimes we, which is great, you know, um, you know, we we have this tendency to think, oh, if I just handle it on my own, if I just figure out my own therapies and research and strategies and you know, all like we do it on our own and we think we can we get a good hold of it but personally what i've learned is that um the more we take devotee association devotee help seniors help all that they will help us i personally i have experienced that they will help us to um um, um to feed the good dog <laughs> quicker yeah. than the bad dog by the help yeah. of the devotees yeah by their by that association and by reading Srila Prabhupada's books and hearing from Prabhupada we can discern what is actually beneficial when the devotees teach us something we can refer to that teaching coming from Srila Prabhupada's instructions and then we can understand oh this is something I, I can apply or so this is something that refers to this. We have to know a little bit about the philosophy. So when we're, we're given the instructions, maybe not so much verbally, but through that association we have experiences, we can discern, oh, yeah, this is something I can, I can use. But here's the solution. And devotee association is the foundation for getting purification and for getting inspiration in our devotional life. Thank you, Maharaj. I was going to write that last sentence that you said was so perfect. Thank you. Are there other questions from the voice with something came through, Maharaj? Uh, let me see. Mansi. Uh, She's in Mansi. All glories. Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful explanations on how to develop qualities and detailed insight on tolerance in specific. Oh, okay. Are there any questions from devotees? I think that topic on tolerance really was an amazing topic from this class, Maharaj. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. I was going to request Marsh that you know um, uh, probably if if you can add this to your bucket list of giving a workshop on tolerance, humility, and tolerance. Well, that that centers around Lord Chaitanya's verse: "Charnada pi suni chena tayori vasu hishmana, amani namamana dena." And that verse there speaks about four qualities, humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and uh, giving respect to others. These are the four qualities that Lord Chaitanya says are the foundation, or the, not foundation, but these are the four qualities that are required for executing successful devotional service. 
Without these four qualities, you can't be successful in devotional service. Maj, is, is, is it um, a safe assumption to say that of all the four, tolerance is the biggest challenge? Um, they're kind of interconnected, but yeah, tolerance. I think that one, uh, not wanting respects from others, that's, that's a tough one. Everyone wants to, everyone, a devotee gives respect to others, but a devotee is asked not to take, not to want respect from others. We give respect and we expect to get respect back. So that's a tough one. That could be a tough one. Tolerant, and that also impinges on the, or overlaps on the tolerance because when you don't get that, then you have to just tolerate. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bamarj. This was a really, really informative, deep class. Yeah, if you want to organize a seminar, we can do that. Maybe on that, on that verse, but I'm trying to think we'd have to plan it maybe in upcoming few weeks, not, not so immediate. Oh, definitely a few. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you if you, yeah, a few weeks, few months, a little more. Marge, a question just came through. I'm sorry, Marge. Um, this is from uh, Mansi again. She said, what should be the mood to develop good qualities? Generally, we are told that qualities follow automatically when we, uh, when we perform devotional service. But as a question was asked that to do devotional service, we have to develop quality that the mood should be to please Krishna. So what should be the mood? It's, it's a balance of both of these characteristics. It's, the power of our execution of devotional service along with the cultivation of the qualities that are required in order to execute devotional service. And these qualities are the mode of goodness, which lead to transcendence. Um, you, many times you'll say, Prabhupada says, just if you practice devotional service, you can automatically develop these good qualities. And that's true if you're practicing pure devotional service. But if you're practicing mixed devotional service, then your mixed devotional service um, is still interferes with the, the executed execution of devotional service because it's mixed in with things that are what we say not necessary, and some of them are the wrong way, wrong qualities or not developing. So the most important qualities are the ones that Lord Chaitanya mentioned in that verse, Trinata peace and the Uchena. These are the most. So humility is considered to be foremost, and that's the foundation for developing all other good qualities is humility. And that's mentioned in that verse in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, chapter 13, verses 8 through 12, yeah. verse number 8. I mean, verse the, the first part of that is amanitam adambitvam ahimsam arjavam. So amanitam means humility. So out of the 20 items of knowledge, humility is considered to be foremost. And humility is so glorious that it is considered to be devotional service in and of itself. It's the most glorious of all qualities because it is the position of the soul. The soul's position is in relationship to Krishna, a position of humility. And if that's not there, then we haven't really established our connection with Krishna. <laughs> And to whatever degree it's there, that's how much we have established that connection. So humility is considered to be foremost of all the qualities. And humility allows for tolerance to develop. <laughs> it also allows for pridelessness to develop. I 
I hope that helped, Mansi. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Humility simply means to know your position. That's all. We're small. That's why we're given the term jiva. Jiva means tiny. There's Thank much we can, we can say on humility, but that would be a whole class in itself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. This has been an amazing, informative, deep class. Really. Mansi, you have something to say, Prabhu? Yes, you can go ahead. Um, no, I think this was a very, very wonderful insight, which Maharaj said that humility is the basis, is the base quality from which the tolerance and pridelessness, they come. So whilst you answered my question, I got another, another deep insight beyond the tolerance. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. A humble person, even in the material world, is attractive. <laughs> even from the you know, materialist is also inspired by someone who is humble. Mm -hmm. Yes. Genuine humility, not just some ex not some external display of humility. Genuine humility means it is actually takes root in the character of the person. Hmm. Marge, Marge, there's one request from Prickshit. Can we have a workshop on hu on humility? And um, yeah. I will. I can. We can do maybe two sessions on humility, two two one hour sessions. But then again, we have. It's a matter of choosing the time. Marge, the would you want me to work with Lavanya Prabhu or Sri Devi on? few weeks, few months or something, like a couple of months or something yeah. from now for a workshop? Yeah, maybe sometime in the middle of June or something, maybe. Okay, I can work with them and I will, um, yeah, I'll work with Sri Devi and um, Lavanya proposals on that and we can get a date. It is an interesting topic and it's, it's confusing. You know, we can use a little kind of joke. I guess it's a joke. I'm so humble, I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Maharaj. <laughs> That's a good one, Maharaj. <laughs> I think. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Marj, I, I, I just want to make sure just to ask the devotees one last time if there's any questions or comments that they have from this class. Um, just going down the list here. If there isn't much, would you like to end with one round, Marj, of Japa? Uh, let's see. I mean, we've gone past the time, so I don't know how you are at. So I'm, I'm at your service, Marj. You let me know. I think it would be nice if the devotees are ready. Yes, Marge. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll begin and then I'll end right at the end and then we can stop at that point. Yes, Marge. So. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita Gadakar Shivasari Gaur Bhakavinda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakar Shivasari Gaur Bhakavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 
Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Hari Rama Hari Rama Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna 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 Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Hari
Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Jai Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai Or Pemagande Hare Hare Rama Thank you so much, Maharaj. Vanshokara Putipyasya Kripa Sindhavevacha Patitana Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namona Mahashula Prabhupada Ki Jai His Holiness Chandramali Swami Ki Jai Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj.